Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're talking about how Steam have released some official numbers from 2020 and good news, the numbers are up and also about the Steam VR updates for PC VR. Let's go. Today here in Singapore, it is TGIF, Whew, the best day of the week as we kick off finally the weekend. And if you're new to the channel, by the way, very nice to meet you and a huge welcome back to all our regular subscribers. Of course, this is VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and where you can get your weekly dose of VR educational entertainment. So before we talk about the update of Steam VR, just want to mention that Steam have apparently announced some numbers. There's been an increase of 1.7 million new VR users, which is fantastic, and also an increase in 71% in game revenue across the industry. So of course, there's so much more to go and we need many more millions. Come on, there's about how many billions of people in the world? Yeah, there's a lot. We need at least half of that half a billion people or a billion people in VR before we can really say that it's been adopted. But nonetheless, fantastic news. All right, let's move on now to the Steam VR updates. By the way, Steam are always very busy and they're always patching updates almost on a daily basis. If you go back to the history of the number of updates they've made, they've made quite a few since December 24th. But the newest one we're going to talk about is starting January 8th, which was this month indeed in the year of 2021. Starting from the latest updates, they've added a per setting for overriding automatic throttling and prediction behavior. Now, this is particularly useful for applications with particularly poor performance that benefit instead from a fixed lower frame rate for an overall smoother experience. But these settings are only available, however, to headsets which use SteamVR's compositor, i.e. for example, the NDX or the Vive. You can now apply motion smoothing to allow up to six frames of extrapolation instead of the previous one, which is only three. Do note, however, that this only applies again to SteamVR's compositor. Now, they've also disabled the HTTP request to check for updates when SteamVR is running without Steam. Now, I think this is very really useful, of course, for those who are running their games not using Steam. If something's going on in the background, then of course, this can indeed slow down the performance. They've also updated, by the way, Oculus Quest 2 users to have more accurate render models. They've also been very, very busy in reducing the memory GPU frame rate and also have added a workaround for very low frame rates for some combinations of graphic cards and drivers. However, we're not able to know specifically the list of those drivers and also graphics cards which have been impacted. For index users, what they have done is temporarily disabled an index firmware recovery feature that could interfere with Oculus CV1 sensor firmware updates. So this also should increase your performance. By the way, don't forget to be part of the notification squad after you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos because we do upload a lot of news about Oculus, about Steam VR, about virtual desktop and all those kind of things. Of course, a lot of HP Reverb G2 content as well. Now, I've tested this using the Pico Neo 2 as well as the HP Reverb G2 and I have to admit it hasn't caused any issues whatsoever with both of those headsets. If you have any issues with the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Link, please do leave a comment below. Let the community know so that we can all help one another. And of course, for the full list of all the various different updates, do go to the link in the description below the like button, which will redirect you to the official SteamVR website.